start by uh, just applauding the Brazilians for coming up with one of the um, sanest, most common sense nutritional recommendations of any nation that I know of. Uh, the idea of talking about real food in your nutritional guidelines, how it is prepared, how it is enjoyed, is such a departure from the normal way of talking about nutrition these days. Uh, and that it really represents a breakthrough and a new way of thinking about food. The most important distinction in eating, I think, is between simply eating real food and what uh, the Brazilians are calling ultra-processed food, what I would call edible food-like substances. And if you can make that distinction, you're well on your way to a healthy diet. And that's the message that the Brazilian government is sending with these guidelines, that that's what matters, that we needn't count calories, we needn't look at nutrient composition, we just have to eat real food and uh, preferably cooked by human beings, eaten uh, socially. Um, I think that this idea can be expanded on. I think it's a common sense idea, but people still have trouble recognizing what is ultra-processed and what is real food. And so, as a, as a writer and an advocate in this area, I have been working on a series of food rules that you might think of as um, ways to implement this big idea, the difference between real food and edible food-like substances. So for example, avoid foods that have more than five ingredients. Uh, you'll find processed foods have long ingredient lists. Uh, many of them are unrecognizable to a normal person. Uh, and that leads to a second rule, don't eat foods with ingredients that your child cannot pronounce or that you don't recognize, or that you can't recognize, uh, that you can't imagine existing in a state of nature. Uh, a lot of those chemicals, you can't really imagine what they look like, because no one's actually ever seen them outside of a food science laboratory or factory. Um, avoid foods that won't eventually rot. Um, one of the hallmarks of ultra-processed food is it has an indefinite shelf life. Uh, it lasts forever. It's immortal food. And food is alive and therefore should eventually die. So um, one way to know if the food is real is will it eventually rot? Um, shop the peripheries of the supermarket and stay out of the center. In most supermarkets, uh, you find the most heavily processed food is in the middle aisles. And the real food, the, the fruits, vegetables, fish, meat, dairy, is on the edges because it needs to be restocked continually because it does go bad and um, so you want it near the doors and the, and the shipping uh, areas. Um, so stay out of the middle aisles. Um, so these are, these are a set of, of, of food rules that might help um, because they're very easy to remember. Oh, and one more that I really like. Um, you know, when you're shopping the cereal aisle, there's so many, it's a very, um, challenging aisle. There are so many deceptive health claims. Uh, there is so much sugar being sold as food. Some of these cereals have 40% sugar by weight. And people, you see people on the cereal aisle like studying labels and counting grams of sugar and, and, and looking at ingredients. And I have a very simple rule for that aisle. Don't buy any cereals that change the color of the milk. And if you do that, you will probably be avoiding the worst culprits. I think that the change will come from consumers uh, thinking about food in a different way. Um, I don't know what the um, policy implications of these guidelines might be. It's conceivable you could have a tax policy that favors real food over ultra-processed food. And in the same way that we're taxing soda now in some places, including Mexico, conceivably we could come up with a definition of ultra-processed food that would allow us to tax it. Uh, and not to tax real food. So, yeah, tax policy is one. Um, I think we also need to look at our subsidy system. Um, agriculture is heavily subsidized by the government. Right now, in the United States, I don't know about in Brazil, we heavily subsidize corn and soy, uh, which are the building blocks of ultra-processed food. We do not subsidize uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, fresh fruits uh, veg vegetables in, of any kind. Um, and so I think that you could, uh, in, the, in, the, in, a, in an ideal world, your agricultural policies would support your nutrition goals and you would align them and figure out ways to support the growing of the kind of foods you're encouraging people to eat to make that food more competitive with ultra-processed food. 
I, I feel a great sense of solidarity with the, uh, the efforts in Brazil. They're far more progressive than anything our government has done in this area, and, uh, and I, wish, I wish them uh, very well. Thank you.